I don't know how much longer you're gonna be here. So I say my prayers every night. One for my mother, one for my father, and one for the love of my life. So if you decide to leave today, then leave tomorrow at the door and take only half of yesterday and forget all home for the present cause it just went away What's up? What's really good? It's your boy Brandon Brayvon Towns, host of that show called Sports Plus Life. You feel me? And y'all already know what's going down today. So guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it all the way off now, boy. Hey, 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 yo, yo, hold up, hold up, hold up. I bet y'all are probably wondering. Yo, B, what what was with the um the singing, the Drew Hill at the beginning of the show? Why why what's what's the special occasion? Why are you singing at the beginning of the show? I don't know. I I, I said the beginning of the last show, I felt like singing something, but my voice was acting up. Hey, my voice felt good today, so I had said, hey, why not? You know, just doing something a little different. But anyway, anyway, how is everybody doing? Please allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Brandon Brayvon Towns, and this here is Sports Plus Life, that there sports podcast where we talk about all of the necessary topics in sports and all of the necessary topics in life. And um, I'm, you know, I'm actually starting a little later than usual because um, usually I like to start, you know, recording before I upload at around noon ish and then, you know, call my homeboy and we get to rapping and stuff that always goes over the time that I intend to talk. But it is what it is because that's my dog and I enjoy uh, talking sports, him or anybody else. But, um, man, I was tired today. I, t- I guess um, yesterday, you know, took the kids to the fair. You know, they had a good old time. If you saw my um, Facebook or IG, you saw I posted some pictures. I actually went live on uh uh, went live on both of them. Now that I think about it, but yeah, like so, so I, I, you know, went to the fair. You know, kids had a great time. They had an awesome time. Let me tell you something, man. And them kids, like this, like now I'm like realizing that I have big kids. I mean, like that growing up. Now, I know my daughter's in kindergarten, but. Like, they were riding everything yesterday. Like, anything that my daughter was tall enough to get on, even on the, you know, uh, adult section of the fair or the, you know, yeah, well, yeah, I call it the adult, the, the adult, you know, the fair has their two sections. They have their kid section, you know, and that's where the animals and stuff are. Then they have the other section where they have all the big rides at. Even in, even in that section where the big rides are at, my daughter, if she was tall enough to get on it, she got on it. My son, for the first time, like, like I saw him actually get on rides at the, uh, you know, at the adult section. So that was the first for him too, and it was a trip because they had such a great and wonderful time. Like I was thinking, you know, we we sitting there thinking like, you know, London might be a little shook getting on some of these rides. You know, we like she this she might be terrified. You know, but in particular when we got on. When we got to the you know adult side, because they had pretty much they got on everything on the kids side except for the Ferris wheel because um, you know they had the all day the unlimited ride wristband you know but 
not one person could, uh, you know, they they don't they didn't allow single single riders, you know, if you're a kid, and you know, I have one, so. So it is what it is. So it's all good. So I just promised them. I said, hey, next time I'll make sure that I get an unlimited ride pass. But um, they got on everything, everything, um, everything on the kid side except for the Ferris wheel. And but when we got to the uh, adult side and, you know, we put London on that. It was a swing that went up high in the air. I mean, it went up high in the air. And, you know, you know, it kind of I was a little nervous. I didn't want to show it, but I was a little nervous. But, you know, when they got off the rides and, you know, at first I'm thinking, first of all, it's getting dark and she may be getting tired. She's all pumped up again. Hey, let's get on the next ride. I'm like, oh, hell. Oh, hell. I didn't got me a rider. And, and my son Roman was just so hype. I mean, Roman was super duper hype. I mean, I'm like, dude, you want to put on your hoodie? Nope. I'm not even cold. I'm so juiced up. I'm like, what did you, are there steroids in these rides or something like that? But they had such a good time, and that was cool. And um, so, of course, when I get home, you know, put them to bed. Now, of course, London falls asleep on her way home. But um, but once I get them settled for bed, I, f- I feel I have to catch up on NFL Red Zone because, you know, I've missed the whole day of it. And um, it's hard to just skim through seven hours of any program. So I didn't go to bed till late, still got up in early enough in the morning to take them to school. But, you know, as soon as I got home, I was out. And usually I'll get up at around like noon or 1130, you know, to get set to start doing this. But nah, uh -uh, bruh, nah, my my ass ain't get up until after one. I was like, oh, damn, it's almost time for me to go get the kids from school. But anyway, anyway, I hope everybody is doing great. Hey, that fall weather is here. It's a beautiful day outside. It is Monday, September the 27th, 2000 of the 2-1. The fall is here. The cr- I could feel the crispness in the air. And um, it's cool, man. It's cool. And we got so much stuff to talk about today uh, in regards to sports because this was a, a pretty unique week three in the NFL. Definitely a unique week three. We also have some boxing to talk about. Boxing screws it up again. Oh, my goodness. But, of course, y'all already know what I'm going to do first. You know, it's what I've been doing for the last uh, month and some change now. I'm going to shout out that spring of love, that spring of family, that um, that spring of unity. Again, hashtag spring of love is real. Why is it real? Because, again, we make it real. That day is coming. November 5th, that day is coming. Countdown is coming. HS versus Verona, HS New Stadium kicking off. Can't wait to see my peoples. Again, shout out. Let's keep them love bombs coming. Everybody is excellent. Everybody is awesome. And I'm going to say it again. I love each and every last one of y'all. Um, and again, I told you guys, I'm not going to get off this train and, you know, I'm not going to get off this train until for one, we get up. I mean, I'm never going to get off the train of promoting positivity and unity and that spring of love cuz, okay. I'm, I'm always going to do that again. I shout out all my people who have been consistent. I, well, I shout out everybody anyway. Again, people like Adrian, Crystal, my boy, big, uh, my boy, big B, my boy Chris Pitt, who's doing his thing as far as, as the Holland Springs football team and your son as well. Shout out Lil Mikey. Um, definite shout out to my people's Gerard. His birthday was just this past week. Happy birthday, bro. Love you, bro. Um, everybody else. My brother Sean. Y'all already know what time it is. Y'all already know how we get down. Chantel, Gina, Nikita, uh, Tanisha, my man Doug. Um, uh, everybody, you know, the list goes on and on. And, you know, you don't have to be like, I'm not just shouting out people from that class of 01. I mean, because, you know, that's mad love. You know, my heart lies there. Like my people, uh, uh, Tiffany, Pam, um, Danielle, Patrice, all of you guys, you know, love you guys to the fullest. Kavon, Donald, Jamar, um, uh, Jalal, everybody, Tommy, Nelson, all my folks, man. But I'm just saying, not just shouting out 01 because, you know, my people, like I said, Chris earlier, uh, Sanchez, um, um, I already said Adrian earlier, my boy, um, uh, Christian, 
Walter, Rika, Rico, Jay Hunt, uh, Brandon and Brian, uh, Marquita, everybody, man. Just mad shout outs to everybody. It's a black and gold thing, man. And we showing, we sending out love everywhere. So I, and I mean, I don't just, I, I don't just want to see my people from 01. I, I want to see my people, period. You know, my black and yellow people, period. And um, of course, we'll do this the safe way. You know, as far we want to do this the safe way, as far as you know, just making sure that everybody. Everybody is safe. You know, we are still technically in a pandemic and um, which leads me actually to what I want to talk about first before I get into sports, man. It's like um, now I've already said how I feel about athletes when I with me. I believe that athletes should go ahead and get the vaccine. It would be my that would be my advice simply because you're in a line of work where you're going to deal with a lot of people on a regular basis. So just in effect to really put the safety belt on, I would take the vaccine. But what has really gotten on my nerves is this notion, and it's always some kind of a plot to divide by, I guess, the powers that be. I don't know. I don't want to go full-fledged conspiracy theory right now. But what I'm saying is always some bullshit going on that is meant to divide us. And by that, I mean vaccinated versus unvaccinated are you serious and people are actually really living that life vaccinated versus unvaccinated hey i don't want to be around unvaccinated people well look if it's an unvaccinated person who's being irresponsible and who is out living wild and reckless i mean okay i can understand that but you know you niggas are crazy we don't need no new kind of a civil war you know between vaccinated and unvaccinated people what if you're a vaccinated person right And your mama's not vaccinated and your mama don't want to get vaccinated. And it's her choice whether she's going to get vaccinated or not. You know, are you going to treat her any different? Or what if it's your father and you're real close with your father? You going to treat him any different? Or is that going to prevent you from wanting to be around them just because it's a choice that they choose to make? Like I said, it is pro-choice. I'm not one of those people who are going to shun or ostracize people who choose not to get vaccinated. I'm just not going to do that because to me, that is stupid. I mean, come on. It's all right. Can't you see it? Can't you? This is a, if we, if people don't chill out and pump the brakes as far as this notion of vaccinated versus unvaccinated, what you going to do when you see, what, what are you going to do when you think that somebody is unvaccinated? Yeah, I know your kind. Yeah, I know your punk ass kind. You one of them unvaccinated people, ain't you? Get get your ass away from me. I know your kind. I know your punk ass kind. You unvaccinated. If you ain't vax, you whack. Get away from me. Who catches a cold, huh? Who catches a cold in the winter? An unvaccinated person catches a cold in the winter. Get away from me. I know I might have caught a cold, but I'm vaccinated, so that makes me different. Nah, man. Come on, come on, man. Let's not let's not open that can of worms, please, please. I mean. What is, you know, what is what is one of the old sayings, divide and conquer? There's somebody out there who is trying to di- who is trying to divide and conquer. And unfortunately, people fall for it all the time. Look, one thing I will be consistent on. Look, I am totally vaccinated. OK, fine. I don't think I'm better than anybody. I still think the mask policy is stupid. I still think the six feet distance thing is stupid. You know why? Because when is common sense going to start to kick in? I'm serious. For something that is supposed to be an airborne virus, what the hell is six feet distance to to the wind? If it's airborne, what is six feet distance? What is that? What does that mean to air? You think the air is going to do you think the air stops blowing at five feet and 11 inches? Like I see these 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 rules and regulations in the restaurant, and like when is common sense gonna kick in? You walk into a restaurant, you have a mask on. They want you to wear your mask all the way to the table, and then you can take the mask off when you eat. But if you have to go to the bathroom, you have to put the mask back on. What what, what sense does that make? That makes no sense. Okay, if 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 COVID is already in the building or in the air. And you're just wearing a mask just to cover your nose and your mouth. Uh, your ears are open. Your eyes are open. Your pores are all still open. So when is common sense going to kick in? Go to a table and then you can take your mask off when you eat. Really? What different? Uh, what? That that makes no sense. Like, come on, people. When is common effing sense going to kick in? Okay. Somebody is out here trying to divide and conquer. And people are so gullible because they listen to anything that they hear on TV or the radio and they just take it as gospel. Don't be dumb. 
If you're going to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. I would recommend it. But I damn sure ain't shunning nobody. I damn sure ain't shunning nobody who chooses not to. Only thing I would say is just let's be responsible. I mean, hell, if you're vaccinated, you still have to live responsibly. Just because you ain't vaccinated doesn't give you a free pass to be reckless. I mean, because you can still catch the shit. Like I said, it's just like putting your seatbelt on. You can you have your seatbelt on and your whip, you can still get into an accident. Having the seatbelt on just increases your chance, just makes it increases your chance of survival. It increases your chance of survival. It's just the safer way. I mean, hell. I mean, do I have to get do I have to do I have to go there? I mean, getting your vaccination is like strapping up. You know what I mean? For I mean, that's what it is. That's getting your vaccination is like strapping up. You know, do you, you know, you go in there raw, dog. You run a chance of catching some stuff. I'm just saying. Uh, but anyway, um, like I said, a lot of sports stuff to talk about. <laughs> hey, oh, and once I get done talking with the sports, talking about the sports, I'm going to do a segment. I did this last week, and some people were tripping about it, like in a good way. They thought it was funny. Brandon's funny true stories. Last week, I told about how me and uh, Sean and David and my man Corey ran up into Hermitage High School on senior si- skip day, and damn, they got arrested by the police. And um, people are telling me I need to find this tape. I I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I got way more funny true stories to tell other than that one. So without further ado, let's get to it. Week three in the NFL is almost in the books. We just have to deal with the Monday night football madness tonight. That is between the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. But as far as Thursday and Sunday's games, like I said, very, very unique in a couple of aspects in regards to week three in the NF of the L. I'll start with Thursday's game between Carolina and Houston. The Carolina Panthers have improved to an, a surprising, a surprising 3-0 start as they beat the Houston Texans 24-9. Mind you, Houston was out was without, excuse me, their starting quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, who's dealing with a hamstring injury, who may miss a couple more weeks. But in the meantime, the Panthers lost. Uh, first round pick cornerback J.C. Horn to a broken foot and Christian McCaffrey is having hamstring issues as well be careful now now I want you to realize something with Carolina they drafted uh, the running back who was uh, at the beginning of last year in college football was seen as a Heisman front runner in Chuba Hubbard out of Oklahoma State and I believe they did that because they could be concerns now of C-Mac becoming possibly injury prone and Chuba Hubbard while he's not the same back as Christian McCaffrey because Christian McCaffrey is truly special he he does offer a lot of the qualities in regards to size and he's actually a more powerful runner so you would like to think that with McCaffrey out because I'm pretty sure he won't be playing in their next game against Dallas but Chuba Hubbard should be able to do a number of the same things and Sam Darnold while I said after week one he's an average quarterback he is being put in a system where he can succeed and he is indeed succeeding like I said the Panthers are 3-0 and their defense is real their defense is definitely real and they are going to pose some problems throughout everybody dare I say the Carolina Panthers sitting alone at the top of the NFC South alone by themselves in first place a little bit of foreshadowing there but what the hell on the Sunday's games now my man Tony told me that Buffalo was gonna smack Washington up and that's exactly what happened Buffalo they they curb stomp they monkey slap they bitch smack Washington 43 to 21 you know Buffalo after that head scratching loss to Pittsburgh which is now really turning into a true head scratching loss to Pittsburgh they look like they could be the best team in the league right now yeah definitely a top three I mean Josh Allen I I, I saw possible regression coming from him nah not right now not yet Buffalo legit they 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 beating people up right now so um, they are now 2-1. And, and the next game 
Um, Chicago at Cleveland. Everybody, and much anticipated first start for Justin Fields due to injury to Andy Dalton. And I'm going to tell you something. The offensive game plan that Matt Nagy drew up for Justin Fields was an absolute disaster. Justin Fields was sacked nine times, four of them by Miles Garrett. I what well, they said, just what Justin Fields threw for a net of one yard, one yard. Uh, and, and boy, I'm glad I picked Cleveland's defense to go a couple of games on FanDuel. I mean, they looked pathetic. I'm sorry, the Bears looked pathetic. Odell Beckham's first game back had 77 yards. Good to see him back, particularly now with Jarvis on the uh, injured list, on the injury reserve list, at least for a couple of weeks. So Cleveland, they win 26-6. Cleveland is now 2-1. And and, um, they're looking good. They're looking strong. They're playing the way that you would think that they need to play. They have the best offensive line in football, run the ball, smart passing you have a defense that's coming together even though they they have some big time names on defense so cleveland is right where you would expect them to be and the next game one of the craziest one of the craziest finishes i mean the baltimore ravens at the detroit lions first of all you remember those issues that everybody was saying that jamar chase was having when it came to catching a football Apparently, that's left Jamar Chase, and it has now infected Hollywood Brown, because Hollywood Brown dropped about two touchdowns, maybe three yesterday, and that game that shouldn't have really even been close. Now, Detroit is scrappy. I'll give the Lions that. Dan Campbell said in his uh, press conference when he was being introduced as a coach that they would fight till the end, and indeed, they have fought every game they have fought to the end, but they lost on a NFL record 66-yard field goal by Justin Tucker. I mean, that is the most Detroit Lions way to lose. First of all, the play before, it should have been a delay of game. So the so the Lions actually got robbed. I mean, now look, I picked the Ravens to win the game, but right is right is wrong is wrong. They definitely got robbed. But even still, 66-yard field goal hits off the center upright and bounces through the goalposts. I'm like, damn, 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 damn. That is the most Detroit Lions way to lose. Lamar Jackson had 287 passing yards. Y'all better stop sleeping on the way he throws the football. Lamar Jackson is just is a damn good passer. And uh, subsequently, he led them in rushing just, just 58 yards. But we all know Lamar Jackson is the best passer and runner on the football team. So Baltimore, they squeak out a victory. And they snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, 19-17 to in Detroit. And like I said, that is the most Detroit Lions way to lose a game. A game that you're saying, oh, no, nah, there's no way we're going to lose this game. God damn it, we lost. Yeah. I mean, such is the way and the life of a Detroit Lions player and their fan base, unfortunately. I mean, I damn near feel sorry for Detroit sometimes. Anyway, next game was a big one in the AFC South, a division that appears to be pretty weak to me. I'm I'm not going to lie. It was between the Indianapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans won 25-16. The Indianapolis Colts, the Indianapolis Colts, who are a stacked team offensively and defensively, thinking that Carson Wentz would be the answer Right now, not so much. They are 0-3. I don't think the Colts have started 0-3 in 10 years. And now it's Carson Wentz as your quarterback. Once again, Tennessee didn't do anything spectacular. Ryan Tannehill, 197 yards. All he had to do was be a bus driver. Derrick Henry ran for 113. Um, And the Titans are now 2-1. They've won two straight after dropping their first to the Arizona Cardinals. And, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, to me, the AFC South seems weak to be honest i feel like if tarod taylor was healthy i think houston might be right there with tennessee as far as uh front runners for winning this division but hopefully tyrod will get back soon one of the games of the day afc west showed down the los angeles chargers and the kansas city chiefs i called the chiefs to win tony called the chargers to win and tony was right on the money as los angeles won 30 to 24 in Arrowhead Stadium to send the Chiefs to their second straight loss. And right now, they are cellar dwellers in the AFC West. (laughs) 
You heard it right. As you hear Chucky laugh, they are in last place in the AFC West. Understand that it is just week three, but I'm going to tell you something. Something is off with Kansas City. This is not me jocking off a Levitard or anything like that, but you have to think about this. For one, you can't turn the ball over four times and think just because you have Patrick Mahomes that you're going to get away with it. Think about this. Like, ever since they won the Super Bowl two years ago, most of the Chiefs' games have been down to the wire nail biters. Great for TV. Don't get me wrong. Great for TV. Great for networks. But the KC team who was throwing up 40 and 50 burgers on everybody, beating everybody's ass and taking names, has not really existed since the 2019 season. And what's happened is I don't think that the Chiefs, I say something awful about the Chiefs, maybe I should correct myself and say the league has caught up to the Chiefs. They really had. Even in the speed department. I mean, the like, you know, one of the inter- one of the turnovers by the Chiefs was Patrick Mahomes throwing a no-look pass. Now, look, the tight end should have caught the ball. But, I mean, if, if this keeps happening, I'm pretty sure Andy Reid Andy Reed is going to sit uh, Mahomes down and say, look, dude, you know, I- I'm going to need you to focus in. You may have to leave the Showtime Mahomes alone, and let's just get to blue-collar worker Mahomes so we can get these, we can get these dubs back up. Because, honestly, when you look at it, the Kansas City Chiefs are a Cleveland Browns blown fourth quarter lead away from being 0-3. I'm just being real here. Now, do I think Kansas City will get their act together? I'm sure they will. But then on another hand, I mean, look, hell, I'm a Denver Broncos fan. You think it actually hurts my feelings that I was wrong about Kansas City beating the Chargers? Not at all. You know, to be I mean, to be honest with you. But the um, only thing I would have to say about the Chargers is, I mean, Brandon Staley's uh, handling of the clock at the end of the game and the calls that he made were gutsy, borderline stupid, though. Because, okay, once you got, you you completed the fourth down, you completed the fourth and nine after having fourth and four, which proves that you have absolutely no respect for the Kansas City defense and the way that they're playing. I don't blame you, but you left a lot of time on the clock. You left enough time for Patrick Mahomes to get in position to have a Hail Mary attempt at the end of the game. Like, I didn't, I mean, okay, you got the touch. Look, it all worked out at the end. But I was really scratching my head thinking, what are you doing? When you, you know, they didn't have any timeouts left and you had first and goal from, like, the the, the four? I'm like, what are you doing? Why don't you just bleed the clock and just kick the field, try to kick the field goal so to make sure that Patrick Mahomes doesn't touch the ball? But, I mean, it worked out in general. Like I said, Chiefs now one and two, Chargers now two and one. Uh, Next game, New Orleans at New England. I said that the Saints would win. Tony said that uh, that the Patriots would win. I was the one who was dead on the money on this one. And um, the New Orleans Saints did win 28 to 13 as Mac Jones threw three interceptions. And, you know, the New Orleans Saints are kind of funny, right? Because you saw them against the Green Bay Packers and you said, wow, are the Saints that good? Then you saw him next last week against Carolina. You said, "Damn, are the Saints that bad?" So now this one, you, the, the, what I take away from this game against New England is the Saints' defense is really damn good. They're really good. And for the Patriots, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, look, I don't think they should have got rid of Cam Newton. I don't. Um, I think they're a, they're a better team than last year. But again, I didn't I didn't call them to make the playoffs. And they have a big, big game next week. So we'll see. And then that big, big game next week has turned into an important game next week just based on where their season is going to go. Next game, Atlanta at the Giants. Uh, Tony said Atlanta. I said the Giants. Tony was spot on as the Falcons won a 17-14 game at the gun with a field goal kick. That's all I'm going to get into that game. I mean, they were two 0-2 teams now. One team has a win. And as far as the New York Giants goes, a change going to come. Oh, yes, it will soon. Because some people going to get fired. Um, anyway, next game, Bengals at Steelers. Uh, me and Tony both said Pittsburgh. I think, he, I, I think he, he called me yesterday saying that he had picked Cincinnati. I had to go back and listen to last week's episode. No, we both picked, both, we both picked Pittsburgh, and we both were wrong. 
We both were dead wrong. The Cincinnati Bengals, who they're going to be a tough out for anybody. They beat the Steelers 24 to 10, and I'll tell you why. Because Ben Roethlisberger is done. He's finished. Somebody needs to go to Ben's house right now and say, hey, look, dog, you had a great run. It is time to hang it up. Their offensive line is trash. Their running game is trash, even though they drafted Najee Harris. And Ben can't move anymore. He can't move. Ben, and, and he doesn't have the arm that he that he used to have. And I mean, if you're a Steeler fan, it's got to be tough to watch. I mean, because you lost at home to the Bengals? And this ain't the Bengals from six, seven years ago when they were a really loaded football team. This is a young Bengals team starting to rebuild who's going to be a tough out. They have their quarterback, they have their number one wide receiver, and they have their running back. Matter of fact, they have a couple of good wide receivers. But damn, I mean, I understand that T.J. Watt and a couple other people are out due to groin injuries. That's funny. But Ben is done. And, and, and I, I, I've never said this before, but Mike Tomlin has come into this season unprepared at the quarterback position because you have to have some kind of succession plan. You know Ben is 39 years old. He ain't in Tom Brady shape. He's not. He doesn't have a Tom Brady arm. Maybe he used to, but not now. If Dwayne Haskins is your succession plan, then say it. But I think Mike Tomlin needs to get on the phone. He needs to get Cam Newton, fly down to Pittsburgh, and he should be starting in two weeks. He really should because Ben is finito. He's done. Like I said, their line is garbage. And they are they are predictable right now as they are stale. And Pittsburgh is going nowhere this season with Ben Roethlisberger as their quarterback. And a good win for Cincinnati. Next game, Arizona at Jacksonville. I said this was a unique, unique day in the NFL Arizona beat Jacksonville 31-19 but it was a dog fight after one half as for whatever reason Cliff Kingsbury lined up Matt Prater who had previously had the record for the longest field goal of 65 yards when he was a Denver Bronco lined him up outdoors in Jacksonville to kick a 68 yarder now mind you the kick may have been good from 66 give him that but it wasn't and it was returned back for a 109-yard touchdown, which made the game interesting. And then Trevor Lawrence started doing rookie shit. So Arizona is now 3-0. and Like I said, unique day. Very unique day. Matt Prater tries to break his own record. Doesn't do it. Gives up an NFL tying uh, record-long play. Then at the same time, on the same day, his record actually is broken by Justin Tucker. I tell you, life of an NFL player. Next game, New York Jets at Denver Broncos. My Broncos handled their business. Yo, the Jets are pathetic. Even we know they have a rookie quarterback. The Jets are pathetic. And, of course, yeah, my defense is that good because, I mean, I hadn't seen nobody shut out the Jets yet until yesterday. We shut the Jets out. 20, 26 to zip. We really should have hung 40 up on them. We had a couple of late turnovers, like, at near the goal line uh, get going in to score touchdowns. But it is what it is. We're 3-0. Hey, hey, hey. My Denver Broncos 3-0. Now, my uncle has been calling me talking a lot of shit about our schedule, about our opposition. Look, man, we didn't make the schedule because now the real level of opposition is coming. Yes, we beat the Giants, Jacksonville, and the Jets. But that's what good teams are supposed to do. You're supposed to beat the teams that you're favored to beat. Next up, our next, really, uh, the rest of our schedule now, the, our next 14 games, for the most part, are tough. So you, you're going to find out what we're made of. All I'm going to say is, Uncle Teddy B, baby, Uncle Teddy B. Next game, Miami versus the Raiders. Now, you talk about a unique day. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> the Miami Dolphins, who were playing without Tua, their backup quarterback, were up 14 to nothing. And they have their ball, and they have the ball at their own one yard line. And they call a wide receiver screen in their own end zone. Who does that? That totally turned the game around. You called a wide receiver screen 
in your own end zone, which got tackled for a safety. Who does that? Now, I'm going to tell you who does that. No one has ever done that. Literally, statistically, in the history of the NFL, there has never been a pass completed to a wide receiver in their own end zone before. Until yesterday. And it was a safety. Okay. So, the Raiders come back. It was actually a damn good game. The the Raiders won on the very last play of overtime. Look, I give Joby, Jacoby Brissett uh, uh, credit because he hung in there. He fought. He fought. And he hung in there. Um, but, I mean, you had the game under. They had the game under control. Miami is now 1-2. and two. The Raiders are now 3-0. and oh. So, how about that? AFC West. Broncos 3 and 0, Raiders 3 and 0, Chargers 2 and 0, Chiefs 1 and 2. Err? Okay. Well, hey. NFL. Uh the game of the day that everybody wanted to see, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Los Angeles Rams. Hey, me and Tony both said it was time for TB12 to lose and indeed TB12 lost. Matthew Stafford put on a show after starting kind of sluggish because he had Deshaun Jackson open for about two touchdowns that he missed until he got hot and then eventually found d for a 75-yard touchdown pass. The uh, Rams defense, look, don't let this 34-24 score fool you. This The, uh, the, the Rams beat the Bucks' ass. They did. Tom Brady throwing for over 400 yards, empty calories. You know, you throw for a lot of yards when you're down by double digits most of the game. You know, that's just what happens. And, and people are, I'm going to say this again, everybody got too high up on the Bucs defense following that Super Bowl. Yes, they played awesome in the Super Bowl. But mind you, the Bucs defense wasn't that great last year. They, the weakness of their defense last season was, was pass defense. They just got hot at the right time in the playoffs. And people are so shocked to know what's going on with the Bucks defense. This is who the Bucks defense was last year. If they played an elite passing game, they gave up a lot of yards. They were an opportunistic defense. They did force turnovers, but their pass defense wasn't great last year. It's not great this year. I mean, you, what you're hoping now is that since you had an actual offseason, that Tom Brady and that offense can kind of clean up for the Bucks' deficiencies. But what you going to do when you run into a defense like the Rams? Or what you going to do when you run into an offense like the Rams? Eh? 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 Okay. So, right now, the Rams look like the team. They, they really do look like the team to beat. And I had them finishing second in that division to the Seattle Seahawks, which gets me to the next game. They lost to the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, goddamn. I called Seattle to win. Tony called Minnesota to win. He was dead on the money. Kirk Cousins, 323 yards. Dalvin Cook didn't even play. Their backup, Alexander Madison, who will be a starter in the league somewhere soon, ran all over this defense that Derrick Henry ran on last week. So what's going on, Russ? Come on now. Come on now. What's going on? But the NFC West, that's a beast too. And even though they took a couple of lumps yesterday because in the Sunday night game, the Green Bay Packers at the gun beat the San Francisco 49ers 30-28. to Now, a lot of people are mad because San Francisco scored a touchdown and they had 37 seconds left. You're saying that is too much time for Aaron Rodgers. I don't disagree, but at the same time, if you have a defense like the 49ers are supposed to have, you should shut that down. They should not be, if with 37 seconds left, you should be able to close the deal. So, and as far as Green Bay is concerned, I think everybody is quiet now on that week one atrocity that Aaron Rodgers put up because he's come back and back to back weeks, beat the Lions, who are who are a tough out, and then beat the 49ers in San Francisco, who were undefeated, who are still going to be a damn good football team. So, that's all the football coverage. That is week three. Now, all we have left is this Monday night football game. So, you know, we're almost we're almost home with that one. And, of course, you guys already know what time it is. It's a Monday. It's the most wonderful time of the year. You know, it's NFL time. We need them NFL picks. We need that NFL analogy. We need that sports analogy. We need that life analogy. So, you know, I get on the phone with my main man, Tony. Tony, what it do, homie? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Another wonderful Sunday. Uh, yeah, another interesting Sunday. Yes. Um, too early to call anything, but um, there's some people showing some signs of life, and there's some people that are expected to be living, but 
dead and stinking right now. Ah, that would be one Ben Roethlisberger. And now, um, yes, um, I, I, I had to correct the show. Well, I corrected the show earlier, just like I had just told you before we got on. That was that was one of the picks that we both called Pittsburgh. I went over the pick, so all in all, the ones that where we went uh, against each other, you got one more right than me. You know, you got uh, Chargers beating the Chiefs. You got um, the, the, the Falcons beating the Giants. And you got the Vikings beating the Seahawks. And I should have had uh, Detroit beat Baltimore. But, you know, thank you, NFL. They, they killed me with the, the audacity. They're going to apologize. We're, we're, we're sorry we blew the call. Come on, man. You got one job, refs. One job. Look at the clock. Look at the snap of the ball. That's it. Oh, and I did admit to that. I mean, no, uh, okay, well, technically it goes in the uh, 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 one on the right column for me. But, oh, I said the Lions got robbed. I said they lost in the most Detroit Lions way possible because that should have been delay a game. That ball was snapped about two to three seconds after the clock had hit zero. And I don't care what Baltimore fans say, he don't make a 71-yard kick because it bounced on the uprights. Yeah, yeah. It bounced on the uprights, so, yeah. But, I mean, isn't that the most Detroit Lions way to lose? It is. It, 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 it is. You know, but they had other chances. But, yeah, that's, you know, that, that's terrible. Again, you got one job. All you got to do is stop them. But at the same token, if you're a Baltimore Ravens fan, you're saying, hey, if Hollywood Brown hadn't had a case of the drops, maybe that game's not that close. This is true. This is true. But it is, it so. is what it is. So, um... So, all right, first first game I want to get to, Kansas City and the Chargers. Take it away. There's no need. There's no need. We discussed that. Kansas City defense. That is an issue. Kansas City front. The, the, the last time Kansas City front was really a threat, I, I think Justin Houston may have been suiting up for him still. Right. Um, they, they haven't been that for a number of years. And because their offense is so potent, People forget about that other side of the ball. They make time for stops here and there, but they just get on top of you and put you in this pass, pass, pass situation because they're blowing you out by 21 points. Well, what happens if they come up against a team that can put up them same points? Um, Chargers made some stops. They made the big plays when they count it. They're on defense. So, you know, that's all it is. And if Kansas City doesn't, doesn't get right in that particular area, there's a number of teams that can knock them off. Well, and it's funny, well, because I mentioned this earlier, because I said, you know, ever since they won the Super Bowl, yeah, remember the the, uh, the Chiefs went fourteen and two last year, but uh, uh, all of their games, all of their games were down to the wire. Good for the good, you know, good for you know for TV ratings, good for network, for whatever. But they don't. I mean, because you know, you said they're blowing teams out by twenty and thirty points. You haven't seen that since twenty nineteen. I mean, really, the only game that they blew somebody out in last season was the a- was Buffalo in the AFC Championship game. And I don't even necessarily think it's a fact of them falling off. Now, yeah, their defense stinks. But it's a fact of the league has caught up to them. And then on the, or then on the top of the fact, with their defense being so suspect, you go for it on fourth and four, get a penalty, then are backed up at fourth and nine. You're going for it then when you don't really have to. Proves that nobody has a bit of respect for your defense. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, from here going forward, um, it, it's it's because right now, just from where I'm sitting, um, even though he hasn't won the accolades, Herbert is every bit Mahomes, every bit, and he's a different kind of quarterback. But uh, he, you know, he's every bit of him, and um, so I don't see that that division is not a cakewalk anymore. That that the path to the Super Bowl is not a, a given. That Kansas City is going to be there going forward. Well, I told you at the beginning of the season. I said by the end of the season, we could be talking about Justin Herbert being a top five quarterback. Um, you're absolutely right when you said that this division is no longer a cakewalk because as good as Justin Herbert is, they're even still looking up in that division. You know, they're looking up at, at Denver and they're looking up at Vegas. 
And Vegas right now, Vegas is they have something on their side because they're pulling off every close win that you can that you can fathom. All three of their wins have been nail biters. Oh, they tried to give that game away though. They they, 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 they tried to give that game away. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't be allowed you shouldn't be allowing an offense to convert on fourth and twenty. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But you know, Jacoby is Jacoby and yeah. I mean, that's what I give Jacoby credit. I, I, yeah, I give Jacoby credit because it's not like he lost the game for him. Now, I will say this. You're up 14 nothing, and you're at your one-yard line. You're calling a wide receiver screen in your own end zone. Who the hell does that? I mean, that's what really swung the tide of the game. Like, that, literally, that's never been done in the history of the NFL, of completed pass to a wide receiver in their own end zone. And that is what totally, because Miami had complete control of that game. Now, to give Jacoby Brissett credit, once the Raiders scored 25 straight points, they fought back. But, but you know, the Raiders, these are games that two years ago they lose. Right. You know, yeah. so, you know, they're making a turn. It's the Chucky effect, man. The Chucky effect. Well, yeah, well, yeah got to be. And okay, and um, you said Seattle would be the odd man out. You may be right. Like I said, it's just week three. But um, I, 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 I still say Seattle, man. But the San Fran may find a way to get to the bottom because come on, man, how you not coming to Montana Adams? How, how do you not double, triple, make somebody else beat you? You're not getting Aaron Rodgers the whole game, but you're just going to leave Devontae Adams wide open. You're playing zone. Right. You, you know, you're supposed to bracket that dude. I mean, top, bottom, side, everybody. Let the water boy come out and guard something. <laughs> but, you know, two passes in their field goal range. How? San Fran, how? Right, and see, everybody was mad that they left 37 seconds left. I said, I'm not mad. I said, at first I was too, but I'm not mad at Jimmy Garoppolo, who's actually playing very well, by the way. I'm not mad at him for going and getting a touchdown. You left 37 seconds left. Green Bay had no timeouts. If your defense, San Francisco, is supposed to be the defense that it has been made out to be, you should be able to close that deal. 37 seconds, no timeouts, you should be able to close that deal. Right. How the hell do you leave Devontae Adams wide open? Well, I'm going to tell you, two things happened. One, it wasn't Garoppolo, because I'm sure he didn't expect that fullback to take it take it in. Uh, but, you know, fullbacks being fullbacks, he wanted his moment in the sun. He saw that, that, that pay dirt and went for it, which, okay, I'm okay with that. That's what you have a defense for. That's what you pay a defense for. Yep. But you have been successful uh, a lot of the game man-to-man. Man to man, you've been playing them straight up, man to man. Every now and then they would drop back in zone, but they've been playing man to man. I understand the situation. Most teams will go zone, but go some form of hybrid because the, the, the uh, young man that was guarding the mighty ass did a pretty good job on him for the most part. Uh, he was physical with him. He didn't make he didn't make them catches easy for him. So I, you know, just put somebody over the top and let him go man to man. Let the safety shade him and go man to man. But, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, but, I mean, you know, a lot of people are clamoring for Trey Lance, and Garoppolo's not making it easy. That's all I'm going to say. Because one thing that is proven is that for whatever reason, even though he's not durable, when he plays, he wins. And even though they lost last night, that really you can't put that on him. Well, I think that Garoppolo is looking better, and I, um, they called it last night uh, that they've dumbed down the playbook to make it more simplistic for Trey Lance, and Garoppolo was drawing from that same playbook, so it, he may have benefited from the playbook being dumbed down, which is why he's playing a little better. And if anything else, you know, whenever you do decide to go to Trey Lance, it's, if, if Garoppolo can actually stay healthy, it's going to make him more desirable for a trade. Yep. There you go. Yep. And um, let's see. Oh, Cleveland Browns, uh, Chicago Bears. What do you think about <laughs> – I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Justin I Fields. I think that there's going to be a midseason firing. <laughs> um, I, I, I can't see it, man. I mean, I, I understand – 
the philosophy, but no, no, Justin Fields is not the answer, and and you can't if you can't see that in practice and you know individual drills as a coach, you just still gonna put him out there. Still, gonna, oh my God, like me, you, and and nine other cats, we just know could have put out a better offensive output than the Bears. He passed for one yard. Yeah. Sacked nine times. And you just going to sit there and watch that happen. You just <laughs> right. sit there and watch that happen. <laughs> and it's not that Baker Mayfield played awesome. He was sacked five times himself. But, right. I mean, but, I mean, if you were just to look at the box scores, you'd be like, oh, man, Cleveland beat the shit out of him. I mean, I mean, in essence, their defense did. You know, they, they. I mean, that's. I mean, that was bad. That was. I mean, I had. I. I, I heard people with such high hopes and expectations for Justin Field in this game, and oh, oh. So okay, well, question. Since I'm talking about Cleveland, let me get into the AFC North. And I said this earlier. All right, Cleveland is right where I, I would think they would be. Baltimore, they're kind of living on the edge. Now, I know they're supposed to get Bateman back, I think, this week. Uh, Oddly enough, going against my Denver Broncos. But I remember you said last week how the Colts were going to be a tough out. I think you you may need to switch that. And I'm not saying the Colts aren't going to be a tough out, but they're not looking good right now. Cincinnati right now, while I don't expect them, like, I don't expect them to be a playoff team. They are 2-1. and one. I expect them to be a, they, they're going to be a tough out. You have your quarterback of the future. You have your number one wide receiver of the future. And your number two. You have your running back still. And, you know, they're going to be hard to deal with. Ben Roethlisberger, to me, is done. They, to me, he is finished. They have, I mean, particularly that now that you have him, you, that the offensive line is garbage. Their running game, even though they drafted Najee Harris, is garbage. I mean, Pittsburgh, it would not surprise like it wouldn't surprise me if they ended up being the cellar dweller. And I never thought I'd say this, but at the quarterback position, Mike Tomlin has been unprepared. What do you think? I think Pittsburgh's taking an interesting turn because maybe I don't know, four years ago, five years ago, Big Ben would, would throw for 400 yards. He might pass 45, 50 times to get that, but he could he could do it. Um, then they went back to the running game when they had... Uh, Le'Veon. Uh, Con- uh, no, no. Oh, Connor, 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 James Connor. Connor. Uh, yeah, and it looked like they were going to get back to that old, you know, uh, Steelers, you know, and, and preserve Big Ben. Um, and then... They went away from that. They started jettisoning players, and Pittsburgh always. Had, we had this discussion, I think, on one of the podcasts that that, that they're one of those franchises that um, they don't like to pay. They just plug and play, plug and play, keep drafting talent, but eventually that catches up with you because a lot of those players are just not going to pan out. Now I think that's kind of where they are. Big Ben is showing that wear and tear. He's not that guy that can can uh, pull a rabbit out of a hat anymore. He's not mobile. Um, I mean, he's still a big dude, still, you know, hard to bring down. But other than that, you know, they, they just know. I mean, Juju, uh, Juju Smith, that's it. Like, that's it. There, there's literally nothing else that scares you. Uh, and Juju don't scare nobody. Juju is not a number one receiver. Ever since Antonio Brown left, Juju has – you've seen that Juju is not a number one. He's a great number two for an elite number one. I think the receiver if, that Pittsburgh has that may strike any type of field – yes, it's Claypool. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, in that division, you know, I think it's compounded because of the division. And you might, you're right. I, I, I see Pittsburgh here, the cellar dweller. Um their hallmark is defensive. You can't stop nobody. Uh, and then your offense is not, you know, in that division, you're dead. Yeah. I mean, you're I was not. talking about Buffalo earlier. I said it if I said honestly, if it wasn't for a head scratching loss to Pittsburgh and it's really turning into a head scratching loss to Pittsburgh, Buffalo may look like the best team in the league right now. But what do you think about Cam Newton to Pittsburgh? Uh, I think it's a lateral move. I don't think it's an upgrade. I think it's a lateral move. Cam has shown 
no signs that he's significantly different or better than Ben Roethlisberger. More mobile, don't you think? Yeah, yeah but at Cam's age, Cam is not... Yeah. They ain't Cam's mobility versus young Cam's mobility. Two different things. They, they, Cam is as mobile as Ben Roethlisberger was when he was young. Okay, right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and that ain't that damn mobile. Um, so I don't think that brings much of anything <laughs> different. And uh, well, just based on pure arm strength, I think Big Ben still got a stronger arm. Than Cam. I, uh, well, well, I don't well. know because Cam is throwing ducks in the Yeah, ring. yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Well, I mean. Now, once upon a time, he was throwing his 60 yards, but yeah. I mean, but just Ben just looks. He, I know he lost some weight and everything, but I mean, the Steelers did not. Uh, clearly, they did not address the offensive line during the offseason. Clearly. Um, and two, there's there is no succession plan for Ben Roethlisberger. Now look, if Dwayne Haskins is your succession plan, then say it, cause it ain't Mason Rudolph. If you tell me Mason Rudolph, because you've you've gotten a huge uh, sample size of Mason I Rudolph. Got a name for you. Forget Mason Rudolph. Forget I got a name for you. And he's doing nothing. Like, literally, he's doing and, and there's no foreseeable plan for him in the future because otherwise he'd have been in the game yesterday. Man, just, just shoot the Bears a fifth, sixth, a six-round pick and get Nick Foles. You know what? I You know, I'm not, a, I'm not against that, but here's the problem. This is the reason why I said Cam Newton. Because their O-line stinks. You know, Nick Foles, Nick, Nick Foles maybe can do a jab step here, a jab step there. And now I, I actually think Nick Foles would do great with those receivers. Now I, I agree with you there. I think with the weapons that Pittsburgh has, that would that would be good for Nick Foles, but you gotta have time to throw it. You would have to have to, but he 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 would have because one thing that that Super Bowl run four years ago, Philadelphia had a top offensive line. They had a great offensive line that gave him time and gave him protection. And with the great offensive line, they had a running game. Pittsburgh has neither. I mean, Pitt, I mean, because I mean, come on, like, like the Bears' offensive line hasn't been as bad as we actually thought they would be. I thought they were right there with the Giants for worst in the league. They haven't been that bad. They just had a horrible game plan yesterday. But Nick Foles of Pittsburgh, unless you do something to shore up that offensive line, what's that going to do? Same thing getting Cam will do. I mean, what what we gonna do? Run around a little bit and then still get hit and uh, get knocked out the game? Or I mean, it's a lot of removal. I don't think he's any. I don't. I don't think honestly. I think they're all about the same. I just think that in terms of getting that ball downfield, Nick Foles might be the best bet. Um, oh, getting it downfield, it. absolutely. I, I don't disagree with you there. Like I said, I with I think with the receivers they got. He could make some things happen, but you just had to have time to throw it. Yeah, this is true. Now, is um, true. okay, um, Monday Night Football. You know, we already made our picks last week. We both went. We both went with Dallas. I gotta tell you something. I heard something about this Lyle Collins story that made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing too. I, I, I'm, I'm laughing too because he is publicly denying that. And he was asking the same question. So you know exactly where I'm going with bribing somebody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, but here's the trip part. Here's the trip part. One, everyone wants to know why would he need to if he, he had already clear for him about the funeral, blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. So there's that. But then the other thing that no one's giving clarity because league is, oh, they'll leak stuff out there, but they won't address it in full. So... He got it reduced to two games, appealed it, and then the arbiter said, no, 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 uh, we think it's worth five. <laughs> Even though it got reduced to two. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I read I'm, I'm that. Not, I'm not understanding. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm not understanding. I thought, I, I'm not understanding. I read that story yesterday, and I couldn't help it. I was, re- I was almost ready to call you on the spot, but I was getting my kids ready to go to the fair. 
I can't, I can't explain that one, bro. Because you got people that's going to court right now in a in, in the criminal uh, uh, courts, and they got appeals, and judges, well, you know what, you got five years. Uh, I'm gonna bump it up to fifteen. That doesn't happen, you know. So I, I just uh, there's, some, there's something fishy going on with that whole deal, and. I don't know what it is, but it's something fishy. But he issued his statement, and he said, "I didn't, you know." I said, "He said, he said, if I said it, I said it in joke, but that was it." And that makes more sense because, again, from the league standpoint, since they won't give clarity, why would he have a need to do that? If he didn't fail any tests, why would he have a need to? Yeah. Well, I I just had to bring that to your attention, but anyway. <laughs> Hey, let's make up. <laughs> I will say this on a, on, a, on a side note. On a side note, because this is going to be a thing with other teams. It's a thing with my team. It's kind of pissing me off. They need to pick a lane. Uh, the NFL as a whole needs to pick a lane, but the teams, football teams, need to pick a lane with these players. Um, Ken O'Neill, who with oh, yeah. all the linemen, with all these people that were down. He's unvaccinated. Yeah. He tested positive for COVID. Now yeah. you have to sit out 10, 10, uh, 10 days in quarantine. So you're going to miss this game. You're going to miss Carolina's game. Yeah. Yeah. Which okay, ain't no fine. gimme. It's easy. it's easy for you to sit in and say, well, it's my choice and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But see, this falls under that employment status thing and you, 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 you're costing us. Well, I said this. As a matter of fact, I, I just had to talk about vaccinated versus unvaccinated um and i said that i think that every athlete i'm going to stay consistent with this i think that that if you're an athlete period that because your line of work draws you to a lot of people i think you should be vaccinated i understand it's your choice but your chosen profession you know puts you in in the limelight with a lot of people like we just had an issue today with kyrie irving as far as the media day and him not being able to do it because of the new york vaccination laws and whatnot that's another story we'll get into that another day but yeah that's 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 a trip yeah, with Keanu O'Neill. I saw that too so I mean you know all the cards are starting to stack up for a Philly upset but I'm gonna stick with Dallas <laughs> but um yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of players on, on that side of the ball, and you know it didn't have to be that way, but you know, but it um, is what it is. Let's start with these picks. Let's see next. Let's see Thursday's game, Jacksonville at Cincinnati. Who you got? <sighs> next game. <laughs> next game. Wait a minute now. This is <laughs> See, we're not talking points. You're saying who I got by, you know, by double digits. You know, okay, Cincinnati. Uh, I was going to say because there were no expectations in Cincinnati either, but now you're looking at them possibly going three and one, and coming into Sunday sitting by themselves at first place of the AFC North. I agree. I think Cincinnati's going to win. Yeah. Um. Okay. Now to Sunday's games. Oh, this is interesting. Washington at Atlanta. Um, Falcons because Heineke um, they, they, for those that thought this dude was going to be the diamond in the rough yesterday he showed that yeah he rough he ain't exactly a diamond and um, I, I think the Falcons are, are I, I, they might be getting, getting together a little bit and that's more than you can say for Washington on either side of the ball. Defensively, which is their hallmark, they look like trash. I have to say, so, Washington's, de- yeah, Washington's defense uh, has been one of the biggest disappointments of the season for me. Their defense yeah. has been terrible. And for yeah. that reason, I'm going to go with the Falcons. Yeah, Chase Young didn't even sniff the, the, the sack yesterday. I mean, like, where where they big you know where, where's the big Alabama contingent in the middle like are they even did I even hear names no 
It looks like that that division is just going to come down to what it's been coming down to for the last, well, I can't even say that because Washington did win the damn division last year. But, I mean, for the for the majority of the last few years, it's between Dallas and Philly, and that's what it looks like. I mean, it may, it may now, you know. Of course, Washington could surprise us and win. I mean, you know, nothing is etched in stone when you're talking about the Atlanta Falcons. That's for damn sure. But um, I, I'll roll with the Falcons, too. Next game, Houston at Buffalo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the Bills. Yeah, Buffalo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, next game. Oh, your Detroit Lions <laughs> at the Chicago Bears. The Lions, because the Justin Fields experiment will continue, and the Lions, um, at, at least on that side of the ball, the offensive side of the ball, is definitely better. Bears defense are gonna play, but you know, come on, man. Psychologically, that's gotta wear on you after a while. And you're like they ain't doing that, so why should I try hard anymore? Um, yeah, I'm sure right now the Bears defense feel like they could put up more points than the Bears offense. I'm gonna roll and with that's what it's gonna take for them to beat the Lions. I'm going to roll with you because one thing I've seen the Lions do in each game is fight to the bitter end. And every ending has been bitter, but I think they'll win this one. Um, oh, next game, Carolina at your Dallas Cowboys. I, you know, when the schedule first came out, a lot of people had this penciled in as a win for Dallas. Car- uh, Dallas versus the undefeated and, and, and Carolina and Panthers. That way. And it stays that way because um, your, their, their, their big, biggest weapon won't be in that game anyway, uh, McCaffrey. Uh, most likely won't play. Uh, with him playing, maybe you got a shot. Without him, this, this, Dak is too much. Dak and CD and Mari Cooper and them, just too much. That Carolina defense is real, though, man. And I it's want you too to, much. I want you to keep something <laughs> in mind, too, though. Do you know who Carolina drafted to back McCaffrey up? Do you know the name uh, Chuba Hubbard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chuba yeah. Hubbard. Yeah. Similar back. I believe that move was made because you're starting to possibly see Christian McCaffrey be injury prone. Um, they have a good day. I don't know. I'm, you know what? I'm going to – I may be going out on a limb, or maybe it's just I can't pick Dallas two weeks in a row. But I'm going to pick Carolina. I kind of like what they're doing down there. Darnold, they put Darnold in a situation where he can succeed. And like I said, that defense is real. You may be right. It is in Dallas. McCaffrey is probably not going to play. But – um. I'm going to I'm going to pick Carolina. I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb. Now here's the funny part. If Dallas loses tonight, I'll be ready to probably change that pick. But um <laughs> but for, I'm going to go with Carolina. Um next game Indianapolis at Miami. Colts. Yeah, I'd like to see yeah, I yeah, I agree with you. Colts. Uh Cleveland at Minnesota. <sighs> I, I, I'm, I'm gonna say Cleveland uh, because what do we know about Dalvin Cook's status? That's true. That's true. But and that's the only reason why I'm going that way because I think <sighs> Madison is pretty good though. Yeah, but um, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 gonna stay with Cleveland. I'm gonna give Cleveland's defense the benefit of doubt. See, they'll 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 harass Cousins enough, and if Dalvin Cook doesn't play, even though they have an adequate backup, it's not the same. It's not the same. I'm gonna go with Cleveland as well, and I actually think Odell will get in the end zone this game. Uh, next game: Giants at Saints. Uh, Saints. <laughs> you had to ask me that, Saints. Saints. Yeah, I don't think the Saints pull a Jekyll and Hyde this week. Um, I'm going with the Saints as well. Giants are in trouble. I mean, boy, it, it's it, uh, some people going to get fired. And that might include Joe Judge, as much as people like him. <laughs> He's a Dave Gettleman choice. Um, Next game. <laughs> uh, this will be quick. Titans at the Jets. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe the Jets in another uh five, six years <laughs> get it together, but yeah. Yeah, Derrick Henry gonna have two hundred fifty yards rushing against them boys. Yep, I agree. Titans. Um Kansas City at Philly. 
Um, but I think Kansas City bounces back. Um, uh, although they'll get pressure, uh, maybe they'll get pressure on Mahomes. Um, the weakness, the secondary. You'll see the same thing tonight. That secondary, they got they got that name there, Darius Slay. But beyond that, nobody is impressive. And uh, yeah, so I expect Mahomes and them to bounce back. Yeah, I think Andy Reid is going to come home and have a, a big game. So, yeah, I'm going with Kansas City, too. Uh, a little bit of desperation game for Kansas City, too. Um, you know, this is true. Yeah. Uh, let's they see. want to get cut two, three games behind, and then they got the vision losses. You know, that's right. I had the vision losses, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, big game in the NFC West undefeated Arizona at undefeated Los Angeles Rams who you got <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Cardinals okay I, I'm gonna take the Cardinals I think that that Colin Murray's mobility um I, I think they were were they, they tried to key on Brady and they really in, in a lot of ways didn't really move Brady off of that spot um, yesterday, he, they were just a little. The, 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 uh, they, they were a little shorthanded, but when it the, the points is, you know, ultimately what decided that game. But if you look at the quarterback comparison, and you look at the uh, time possession, offensive, you know, the the passing, it was almost a wash. Like you would think that the, the game went overtime based on all the, you know, the yardage and stuff that was put up. So who, by who? By who? Tampa? I no. When you well. Uh, Going into the fourth quarter, basically right. it was even. With the yardage? Even, except for the scoreboard. Right. Everything okay. else was even. Well, you throw for a lot of yards when you're down double digits most of the game. Well, even at halftime, they were about the same. The quarterback comparison was the same. It's not they I mean, neither team ran the ball, really. Um it's just the Rams made the plays when it counts. They got the, the in the red zone, they got the scores. Okay, That's so you're it. going what you're going with Kyler. So I'm 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 a, I'm gonna go with Kyler um, because again, the Rams don't uh, they are what they are, and and I think that had they kept golf, they probably would be in a similar position. The Rams are a good team; they would be in a similar position, but um, yeah. I'm gonna take Arizona in that one. I think I think it, they're due for an L. Okay, well, and this is a tough one. This is tough. Um, we're gonna have to disagree here. I'm gonna go with the Rams, although I do agree with you in regards to golf and and Stafford because I've already said, look, golf is taking you to a Super Bowl, so your expectations are no less than Super Bowl. Because if you don't get to one, you didn't accomplish as much as he did for as much hype that's on you. But this is still the regular season. Um, gosh, this is tough, though, because Aris, uh, Kyler Murray is, it has that Lamar Jackson X factor to him. But um, uh, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm, we're going to disagree on this one. I'm going to go with the Rams. I don't think they'll have a letdown. I think now they are maybe trying to position themselves as far as Home field advantage now that you've got the head to head over the Bucks, who Bucks have a really cushy schedule outside of the Saints. Um, you know, they have a really cushy schedule, so the Rams um, are going to have to keep their foot on the gas. But you got Cardinals, I got Rams. Okay. Next game, also NFC West, Seahawks at 49ers. Uh, I'm going to give this one to Russell. I'm, I'm going to give this one to Russell. Why? Um, because you cannot let Devontae Adams run wide open. If you're letting Devontae Adams run wide open, then you'll let Tyler Lockett run wide open, 49ers. I'm giving it to Russell. I'm giving it to Russell, too, because they have to win this game. I mean, you're in the division where you cannot drop but so many games because everybody else in your division is too damn good. So, yes, I'm going with Russell. Next game, Baltimore at my Denver Broncos. We take a step up, huge step up in competition. Who you got? Uh, <laughs> um, it's at Denver. 
It is at Denver. <laughs> I'm going to give y'all the benefit of the doubt and pick y'all because you're at Denver. You know what scares me about this game outside of Lamar Jackson? Is that if the game is on the line and Baltimore has the ball and they need a field goal to win in Denver, Justin Tucker could probably make it from 70 because of the altitude. Well, yeah, there's that. But then um, you, you'll know uh, whether or not your coach is afraid of that, whether you, you, if you win the toss, uh, win the coin toss, and he defers. <laughs> and I tell you all you need to know. It just depends on which way to win. The altitude is one thing, but it, it depends on which way that wind is blowing. Um, like I said, he makes that kick because they're in Detroit. Anywhere else, he probably doesn't because uh, he, he doinked it. Um, still impressive, but you know, it is what it is. I, I, I I'm gonna give y'all the benefit of the doubt. Okay, well, I'm gonna ride with my boys because I hear people poo pooing on our schedule, uh, our first three games. But that's what good teams do. Good teams beat teams that they are supposed to beat. And um, now we're taking a step up in competition. Baltimore, I think, will beat Baltimore. I think it'll be Lamar Jackson. He's my favorite player in the NFL. He scares the hell out of me. But I think we're going to win. I think Teddy Bridgewater, even though we're, uh, it's, injuries are starting to uh, concern me with Denver. You know, we've already lost. Judy should be back in another two to maybe four weeks. And um, But we just lost K.J. Hamler for the rest of the season due to a torn ACL. So now we're kind of getting thin on the wide receiver lane, and at least until Jerry Judy comes back. But I still think we'll have enough because we still have two good tight ends, you know, two good running backs. So, yeah, I'm going to roll with my Broncos to stay undefeated. Um, and now the uh, Sunday night game. Oh, I'm sorry. One more 4 o'clock game. Pittsburgh at Green Bay. Um, Green Bay. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I think, think I, I think, think Ben is done. Moves further into the cellar and <laughs> Yeah, I, I agreed. Agreed. And um, Sunday night game, you know everybody's going to talk about this all week. Tampa Bay at New England. Tom Brady's going back to Foxborough. Yeah, he's going to go back to Foxborough and smack him up and had a feel-good moment. And Gronk probably has three touchdowns. And, yeah. Nah. Well, Gronk got a little banged up yesterday. Still gonna have three. If you don't think Gronkowski is gonna play and, and, and ball out next year, next uh, season, you ain't been watching Gronkowski and the statements he's been making lately in terms of Belichick. So yeah, oh, yeah. Belichick gonna put a hit out on him in that game. But um, yeah, I think Tampa Bay is gonna win too. I think the game is gonna be closer than a lot of people give him credit for. I mean, I, I really think people think that this is gonna be a blowout, particularly because of how Mac Jones played yesterday. But um, I think this will be a game that this will be a good game midway through the fourth quarter. But I do think Tampa Bay will win. And then Monday night's game, Raiders at Chargers. Wait a minute. Let's rewind. AB, what's his status? Um, Well, he's vaccinated, so I'm pretty sure he'll play. I know he missed last game, but I'm pretty sure he'll play this one if he clears all the protocols. Oh yeah, there's there's some motivation there uh, too. That's true. Uh, yeah, that's game, true. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. What's the last game? Uh, Raiders and Chargers. I'm 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 sorry, Black Hole, but I think you come back down to earth this week. I think Herbert stays on the road. Okay. I don't damn. I mean, I'm a Bronco fan. I don't give a shit who wins or who loses this game. Um, okay. Uh, well, the Raiders are undefeated, so yeah, I need them to lose. Yeah, I'm going with the Chargers. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's. I mean, that's pretty much the way I'm gonna play that. If my Broncos win and the Raiders lose, we'll be sitting by ourselves in the AFC West. So yeah, go Chargers. Go Chargers. Go. <laughs> um, okay. So now we got that football stuff covered. I did not know. You, you you informed me. R. Kelly got convicted today. Please elaborate. R. Fucking Kelly. Uh, yeah, he, he got convicted of racketeering. Um, 
you know, I think it's 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 interesting that uh, you know what he went up for uh, trial for, or what he's accused of. Um, they parsed it into a charge that typically is attributed to my bosses. Um, I don't know how that works. I have to read the details on that one. Um, I think some of it from the federal standpoint had to do with transporting minors across state lines for purposes of prostitution. Um, Oh, Lord. Well, yeah, but again, I'm going to have to read the details as to what they finally, I just know in the very beginning, I was trying to explain this to somebody, me being a Chicago native, the age of consent, just like in New York is 17. And the feds got involved, or saw their opportunity to get involved because one of the individuals he was dealing with, he took to his Minnesota home, so they charged him with transporting a minor across state lines because the age in Minnesota is 18. Um, when that first hit, I, I, I have my own personal views about Robert Kelly and his situation, but I, I was kind of like, okay, that's not right because what's to stop, you know, 21 year old guy and his 17 year old girlfriend who went to school together, you know, up in New York and moved to uh, another state where 18, they charge him the same way. Uh, on some ridiculous, it needs to be global, 18 everywhere. And then you solve that problem. And that's that. But at the same time, Mr. Kelly get what his hand called for. Um, you know, there, there some certain things are indefensible, but I, I do say um, they need to pursue the co-conspirators with the same amount of zeal they pursued R. Kelly. That I agree with. Uh, Anybody that he cut a check to that bears the same name as any of the victims. They need to go up as co-conspirators. Yep, cause these parents, a lot of these parents, was pimping their kids out for dough. And I, I and I ain't trying to be funny, but um, that I'm gonna say this because it, it's the truth. Uh, we're black men. Um, you, me, both, maybe know one or twenty uh, single black mothers who are more like friends to their teenage daughter than mothers. Oh, yeah. And, girl, you better get that money. They would rather their daughter be dealing with an older man that got some money and can do things for them rather than take Quan, a uh, little young boy with his pants hanging off his ass who can't give her nothing but a D, a blunt, and possibly a baby. I'm just calling it like it is. I mean, truth hurts, but that, oh, that's yeah. the truth. Yeah. Well... So... That, now that 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 you know explains their side of the fence on Mr. Kelly's side of the fence. However, you know it's like, bro, okay, you, you you like what you like, you do what you do, you are who you are. Um, okay, you're singing about it in songs. You, you're walking around like people would never lock your dumb ass up. <laughs> <laughs> you get what your head calls for. I do not. I do not and cannot feel sorry for him. However. You know, we still see that disparity in the justice system from a racial standpoint um, because he didn't get bail. Others, similar situation, they got bail. Um, like I said, I, I'm a fan, still a fan of his music. One thing has nothing to do with the other, I feel. Um, and that's that. But I do believe that a lot of the individuals that are uh, were involved um, me too movement aside were less victims and more opportunists um and now you're a victim you claim victim good well no one said during this whole time that r kelly put on his raccoon mask jumped out the bushes and abducted anybody's daughter he had a lot of volunteers that's all i'll say that's very true because uh, I, I have, I have what the scenario is. I'm a father. I taught my daughter right. You know what I mean? And, you know, what she chooses to do with the information that I gave her as her father, that's entirely up to her. Um, so take it as you will. Well, I mean, 
I don't disagree because while I think the acts that R. Kelly performed were um, were just, I mean, disturbed to say the least. I mean, look, I'm a father too. You know, I have a daughter too, and you know, if, if I had any inkling, you know, I'd be ready to throw, I'd be ready to kill somebody. And um, but unfortunately, there were a lot of parents who knew what were, who knew what was going on. And the thing that got me is the parents like this 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 ain't nothing new. Like we've been hearing about this for our with R. Kelly for twenty years. I mean, and there were there were parents who knew about this, whose daughter would let's, come. Let's in. not say new. Let's not say new because that gives the inference that that their child was doing something uh, with R. Kelly, and they knew, and they just turned a blind eye. No, 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 no. I wasn't. No, I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about knew about R. Kelly's rep. They knew about oh. his history. You know, oh, yeah, they, yeah, they knew about his history. That's what I'm saying. They knew about his history all the way going back to the piss on you tape. I mean, like I said, that's 20 years ago. And, you know, there were people who, there were parents who knew about that reputation, who knew about that history, who knew about his 2008 trial, who still had daughters coming home and saying, hey, I got a chance to, I'm, I, I have a chance to record with R. Kelly. Can I? And they saw dollar signs. Un for the parents saw dollar signs, unfortunately. And any parent, and any parent who 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 knew about R. Kelly's previous history, who has a daughter, you know, or or a child that they're in custody of, and thought that hey, well, he won't do this to my child, was playing themselves. Yeah. Well, I think it's a combo of, of uh, a couple things because I watched. Uh, well, my wife, my wife, both of the surviving R. Kelly's, and I'm gonna be honest. Um, well, first of all, let's be clear: R. Kelly did deal with the spectrum in terms of age, uh, but it's like he was two different guys when dealing with the younger females, and he was when he was dealing with the older females more in his age range. He was more like Ike Turner, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But in listening to the younger females, maybe it's just me, but every single one kind of had well rob and i were together and you know and it's like we were together for two years so you were dealing with him for two years and your parent had no clue at least that's what they're saying that they had no clue you were dealing with r kelly for two years and they all forgive me from saying this but they all seem the majority of them seem but hurt that he moved on to the next younger female they viewed it in terms of being in a relationship. A real relationship. Real relationship with this man. And there's no way as a parent that your child is going to exist in that unless you just literally just working three jobs and you see your yeah. child in passing. <laughs> right. Something. There's no way you didn't know. And if you know, if you knew, then you are and allowed it anyway or benefited from it, then you are a co conspirator. Yep. Yep, your ass should suffer too. It. Yep, I mean, because so, honestly, I mean, I think you know R. Kelly, being a a, a man in his twenties, thirties, forties, you know, I mean, and, and, I mean, you know, and it just gets more the older he gets, and, and the more disturbing it is, because you talk about somebody in their thirties and then in their forties messing with girls who are underage and shit like, I mean, it's just it's it's nasty, like it's 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 nasty. Um, but yeah, it's it's nasty, but at the same, you know, well, it's no but. It's nasty, but there's a lot of gray areas that sometimes don't like to get touched on because we want to vilify specifically one individual when it's really a lot more people involved in these actions. And to that, you say. Um, like, I, I, you cannot vilify one without vilifying the other. Um Sure, Michael Jackson was never uh, convicted, but he was accused. And there are people that even maintain today that um, that story was swept under the rug. There are some that say that's the reason why Macaulay Culkin has had the issues he's had in life. Um, we'll never know because that's a secret, I guess, that went to Mike's grave unless some, some evidence that we haven't seen surfaces 
but it's a trip to me that, that black people were so quick to take Mike's side, give Mike the benefit of the doubt, even Caucasians did the same thing, because we love Michael um, Prince um, in case of his wife uh, Mai Tai uh, or whatever her name was, something like that um, she came in his orbit when she was 17 as soon as she turned 18, he married her um, does anybody really believe that uh, he just rolled over the day she turned 18 and decided he was going to marry or was there something going on prior to that but Prince was still even though she had just turned 18 he was significantly older than her um, but it's Prince and he wasn't viewed the same way it's like I said R. Kelly you know the, the, the arrogance and the brazenness in which he did stuff I think is uh, the main thing that, that, that makes him easy to vilify uh, in terms of that and the fact that you got off you got away you got busted early you yeah. know yeah. and got away but here you are again and you just carried on with it you know so I think that's the reason why a lot of people uh, look at that. But as far as, you know, I'm not going to support it. I'm not going to listen to his music. Did you, did you stop listening to Michael Jackson? Did you stop listening to Prince? No. Um, the man is the man. The music is the music. You know, they're two different things. Elvis Presley. You know, this is one thing that rarely ever gets talked about because we pick and choose who we want to go after. I'm not trying to be funny. Don't get me wrong. What R. Kelly did is wrong. His actions, he deserves to be sitting right where he is. Elvis Presley, Lisa Marie's mother, she was about 15 years old when they got together. Do you ever Jerry hear anything? Lewis. Do you, huh? Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah. Not only was his cousin, it was his cousin, and she was a minor. So. <laughs> yeah, like I said, we, I mean, we pick and choose who we like. We pick and choose who we're going to go after. And for me, the thing with R. Kelly is, as soon as that money train stopped, as soon as he stopped bringing in, you know, boatloads of money, and like I said, I think he should be sitting in a jail cell for what he did. But as soon as he bought it, as soon as his, his value decreased, then he became expendable. Well, it, it, what he should have been doing and his lawyers should have been doing, and, and I think we agreed on this, is... Okay, y'all got me. Uh, how can I get this sentence reduced? Uh, can I get it reduced if I turn state's evidence against some of these parents? Right. Yeah. Y yeah. That, yeah. That's like, what do you have to lose? Y you know. You have nothing to lose because you're already in jail and you know you're going to be sitting in there longer. It's just how much longer do you want to be sitting up in there? Oh, well, he still has pending cases. This is just New York. So no, I know. Case in Illinois, and so, you know, he, he's, he's, this is life. Uh, life plus life. You oh, know, yeah. This dude is facing at the end of the day. And, you know, like, and, and honestly, R, I mean, for one, R. Kelly was dead wrong, all going all the way back to the Aaliyah situation and anything else that we didn't know about. But the arrogance, especially after that 2008 trial where he was found not guilty. How? But he was. But, you know, the arrogance of it. And the thing about it is the arrogance of this whole situation, not just R. Kelly, but that whole but the whole situation of young girls, minors, whatever, is something that has literally until people started really honing in on R. Kelly, even with Michael Jackson's situation, you still saw arrogance of it all around you. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Remember Belly? Remember the movie Belly? Yes. Yes. Remember Tommy from Belly, played by yes. DMX? Yes. You you know exactly where I'm going with this. Yes. Yes. The 16-year-old that called his girl and said, "Well, she said he said we can't do it, but I did suck his, you know what, the night before yes. last." Yes. And that's now mind you, that's just the movie, but I said the arrogance of it has been thrown in our face. For decades. So don't don't think it started with R. Kelly. Don't think it's ending with R. Kelly either. I, I don't think anybody believes that it started. I, I, as, as a matter of fact, I submit to you that there's probably, I don't know, however many 
uh, tens of thousands of 15, 16, 17 years ago. No, it didn't start with R. Kelly. Why? Because they're dressing older, putting on makeup, and telling somebody on social media, oh, I'm 19. Um, yep. So that they can deal with them. Oh, social media made it worse. Social media made it worse. There's two sides to that coin. There's not just a singular side. I know, um, having uh, been a bouncer at nightclubs and fake IDs come through all the time and this is why states have had to uh, put in this this, this one law uh, presumption of age presumption so if you meet this female in a nightclub in a, in a environment where she legally should have been uh, of a certain age and showed an ID whether it was valid or not you uh, presume that she's of a certain age so whatever happens you know you're not necessarily held responsible for it legally if it turns out she's 16 rolling with a fake ID in that environment you know so that's the other side to that coin you know Dave Chappelle did a skit um, years ago you remember the the uh, uh, what was it the Kobe deal where he had the contract had <laughs> And every female he came in contact with signed a contract. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Right after you know when it was in the uh, lost episode, not the lost episodes, the um, yeah, but it, it happened after Charlie Murphy and and um um Donnell Rollins hosted it. Yeah, he got the contract and he was going back to all the people who had written him off and was getting revenge on him. Yeah. So it's it's really one of them things as a you know as a male. Uh, you know, we we, <laughs> we meet females. Well, I'm married. You're married. But prior to that, you meet females. Not, and the first thing that, that that pops in your head is, "Hey, can I see your ID?" Mm-hmm. You know, now you got the real, the the the, the quote unquote real ID. What what, what do I got to buy a scanner thing to be able to scan the ID to make sure it's the real ID? Right. And I mean, it, it gets ridiculous. So it's it's almost anything younger, you're gonna err on the side of caution. Just in general, I mean, just in general. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, but yeah. that 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 whole subject, but in, in particular with R. Kelly, is because it's so touchy. It's touchy because you know you got the mute R. Kelly people. You have some people who are out there who never want to hear R. Kelly's music again. You have some people who don't who can separate the music from the monster, and then you have some people who just flat out don't care. Um. Like I said, I'm one of those people who believe R. Kelly is getting exactly what he deserves. But like you said earlier, there there are people involved in here who need to be held just as accountable as he is. And unfortunately, you're not going to see that because there is an agenda to get this one person, even though this person had it coming to him, um, honestly. But um, there needs to be more heads rolling. Now, one thing that I hey, look, one thing that I said a couple years ago, because I've been talking about this really since the beginning of the show. Um, even had a funny skit about it too. Um, I, I'm not gonna get into that. But um, um, Weinstein, you know, Weinstein. That's one thing I used to say religiously. Why don't you come after Weinstein the way you coming after R. Kelly? You know, and eventually they got him, so they shut me up. But I mean, there's still a bunch of people out here who are getting away with it. But we pick and choose who we want to come after. You can, people can. Well, two, two different scenarios. I think that's the reason why I think they didn't have a choice but to really come at Weinstein, uh, especially once some affluent, pale faced names uh, started accusing him um, and, and standing on a soapbox with a huge megaphone. But um, they were they were claiming the R word versus R. Kelly is a little bit different. Uh, they were claiming the underage word. These women literally say Harvey Weinstein raped him, which is what he got convicted of. Yeah, yeah. Um, women, not young girls. Uh, Epstein would, would be a more, I guess, comparable uh, you know, type thing, but still. But still. The whole point is, yeah, pursue these people with the same zeal. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Same coverage, treating them the same way, you know, all of the above. All of the above. Oh, yeah. I mean, but we that's something that we definitely, that we we, we had to get into but that. We got to be careful. We have to be careful at the same time. And this is 
one thing I said. I, I, I got into it with a bunch of black women about this R. Kelly thing. And and and, and I said this to a female friend of mine. I, I said, you, it's a 50-50 split. Um, you think that a lot of black women are on that side of the fence in terms of R. Kelly, um, right where he belongs, but just as many on the other side of the fence and said, one, um, they don't believe he's where he belongs. They believe that, that me, again, like I said, these females, they knew what they was doing. You know, they knew what they was doing. They either about the money or, you know, whatever, but a lot of them still support R. Kelly. And one of my female friends was real candid with me on that. She said, you know why I do? She's like, because I was their age and I chased older men. And I said, well, yeah, but that doesn't abdicate R. Kelly. Right. You know, and, and, and she's like, you're right. But at the same time, don't go on and get paid for two series called Surviving R. Kelly. Write books about it and go on. you Because you do know they have the Surviving R. Kelly tour. These young ladies are on tour. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Getting profiting from it. And profiting season, from pain. Season, that's that's me, bad. That's, right. Right. Yeah. She's like at that point, see, you can't claim victim, but yet still you you're still trying to cash in. And people are mad that Bill Cosby is about to go on tour when he just got released from prison. <laughs> oh yeah, they real. That's why I said you gotta be careful because because the thing about it is some there there there's some victims, but then there's some opportunists. Right. In any situation, and in Bill Cosby case. Yeah, they may very well be technically in the eyes of the law victim because the law says that's another thing with the bouncing. I warn these dudes, man, you know, you find a female drink, find the drink, find the drink. Once she gets twisted, man, let it just get a number and let her go on home. Don't take her home with you because if she wake up the next morning and regret it, you're going to jail. Yep. Well, I didn't do nothing. I didn't take it from what the law says. She can't consent because she's intoxicated. She's inebriated. What if I'm drunk? What if I'm drunk? The law don't protect me. No, the law don't protect drunk men. Yeah, you know I'm saying, what if I, you know, what if I'm drunk? Can I consent? Hey, the law says it doesn't matter what a man does. So be careful you uh, know, in terms of that. Uh, oh boy, I just had a flashback. I would tell this story on Brandon's funny true stories, but this shit ain't funny, not to me. Anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is. It, it, it's Sean Watson. Be careful. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, because I don't believe there's any victims in Deshaun Watson's case because every last one of y'all had the right to just walk out. <laughs> just leave. Yep. Literally, just leave and say, I'm not doing this. And bounce, you got to get somebody else. Instead of saying, oh, and then he rubbed, he, he rubbed his stuff on my hand and and this, that, and the other. And he, he asked me to do that. Well, it, it wouldn't have been none of that if you had just bounced. When he first started doing something inappropriate, if you had said something, and then if you kids it, you just left, then it wouldn't have been that. See, my issue with Deshaun Watson is, dude, you're making $35 million a year. What the hell are you getting Instagram masseuse for? Pay, you know, get one good masseuse and stick with her. Because he, that's what, the, that's, because at, at, at their heart, I mean, we're talking about sports, but at their heart, these dudes are just one big kids. You know, yep. uh, 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 a lot of them are used to having that, even from a high school athletic standpoint, having uh, being the center of attention and being catered to, and having groupies. Yep. And so that's what they thrive on. That's what they gravitate toward. That's what um, uh, uh, what's the young man that that had the rumor that he was going to end up having to pay uh, it turned out to not be true but the $200,000 above or whatever child support oh uh, yeah damn it what's his name um, that is C, uh, CJ not CJ um, I'm thinking CJ Henderson the boy that cornerback just got traded but it was something like that <laughs> his name um, but yeah and, and then come to find out the girl was kind of scoping him since college she'd come to the college games and she may have been grooming them Brittany uh, James Hart used to deal with her and a bunch of athletes used to deal with her actually <laughs> um, but now she is quote unquote baby mama uh, but anyway the, 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 these dudes they don't make smart decisions no they don't like, especially when they got they money don't. They just don't. Mm. So they see something shaking on Instagram. Ooh, she nice and blah blah. I want to beat her. And next thing you know, you know. Oopsie! Uh, you know, don't do it. Tragedy! Don't do it. 
yeah, court know, case do don't yourself. do it no it never works it never works no 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 i mean we we i mean men in general when you have money you got to start making smarter decisions for real you got to find that chick that was down with you when your ass was broke <laughs> i mean for real <laughs> uh, i wouldn't necessarily leave it just to that because no, i'm not leaving it just to, to it that's just one suggestion get out of the pond you've been swimming in for years especially if that shit was toxic <laughs> shaquetta you know she she ghetto is all get out it's not shaquetta yeah, probably don't want to. i wasn't talking about the shaquettas of the world <laughs> I'm just saying. That I wasn't talking. Was no, I, but I was no. Not if you was dealing with the Shaquettas of the world. And why does it have to be a Shaquetta? It could be an Amber. But, you know, they, I mean, they, there is that that you could, you know. I always say, you know, in that scenario, man, I'm going like to the way down into the swamplands of uh, 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 Georgia, Florida, somewhere, and uh, find some chick that she ain't, she ain't got to shoot. She still walk around barefoot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you want somebody who don't even have a TV? They don't know who the hell you are. <laughs> yeah, like Eddie Murphy said, he going ever get him on Fufu. Some chick riding bareback on the zebra <laughs> with a bone in her nose. You know what I mean, yeah, he said he'd be good until American black women get a hold to it. Oh, you taking yeah. it back now? <laughs> Was that raw or delirious? <laughs> <laughs> she done got a perm in her hair and now she didn't she didn't totally flipped on you. <laughs> I want half heavy. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. It, it is what it is. But yeah, that's what you basically would have to do. Either that or get get somebody that already got money, but you know. Yeah. As long as they ain't a celebrity, as long as they already already got their own and y'all can agree on a prenup from the gate. <laughs> Woo, boy, I'm going to leave the prenup conversation for another day and another time. Look, bro, oh, my goodness, boy. Hey, on, on, a, on a side note, speaking of which, it's funny because she, she I got her no follow on my TikTok because she put crazy videos. Uh, but it's interesting that Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade, that, that whole, uh, you know, scenario. I don't know if what she said recently, uh, you know, affected their thing, but he hadn't said anything publicly. But um, they said the stuff seemed solid, which is why everybody was like, Gabriel, why are you saying this now? Like, like you trying to sell your book that bad and taking a shot at your husband? Yeah, yeah, I ain't like that at all. Like, what, what? Yeah, like, mm, but you know, <sighs> but uh, I. I that's that's why I don't see. This is why I don't want to, you know. Oh, I mean, this is hard to say. Like, this is why I just don't want to depend on money. That might sound stupid, but making money and depending on money is two totally different things. And it's like you like, oh, the people who will be out here who will throw you under the bus for a buck. Ah. Ugh. Mm. Damn well. It wouldn't matter. I, I'd move to Grenada by my island somewhere. <laughs> I'd be out of here. I know that's right. I, I would be out of here. I know that's right. The only difference is I'm going to be smarter than Wesley and Steven Seagal and people like that. I think I'm going to go ahead and just renounce my U.S. citizenship. I was going to say, no, no, no Swiss bank accounts for you? <laughs> yeah, no. They, you ain't getting me with taxes. No, you're still an American citizen trying to throw me in jail. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and get me citizenship to Japan somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Well, brother, let me tell you, it's been fun again. And you know what? Oh, I might be hitting you up later on tonight, you know, in regards to y'all football game. So, well, I'll tell you what, you're, you're, you're thinking about next week in Carolina. What you see tonight across the defensive front will tell you how Carolina games want to go. Okay. Okay. Parsons and Gregory are able to wreak havoc and get Jalen Hurts running for his life, then they're going to do the same to Darnold. Okay. All right. Well, we shall see. Because you think that you'd have to admit Philly's offensive line is better than Carolina. Yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> so if they're able to get generate pressure on that line, then they definitely don't generate pressure next week. Absolutely. Okay. Well, 
I tell you what. Till next time, brother. And like I said, I might hit you. I might hit you tonight. I might hit you tonight. Um, but um, till next time, you know what time it's gonna be. Most wonderful time of the year. And um, I'm gonna holla at you. Oh, man, y'all already know how it is. When me and my man Tony get on the line, we start tripping. We start having that real talk. Like, I didn't know anything about the R. Kelly situation until he told me about it. And, you know, I have been making, you know, I've been commenting on this situation really since the show started in 2018. And it's just a trip because, wow, again, I think R. Kelly should be right where he is for the acts that he committed. But I'm smart enough to know and everybody should be smart enough to know, you know, just don't listen to what's being fed to you on television um, as far as, hey, we're going to firmly point the finger at him. Yeah, he's getting what he deserves, but there's a lot of people out there, a lot of parents, unfortunately, out there who hung their kids out to dry because they were seeing dollar signs and worrying about money rather than the well-being and the mental, the, the good mental in regards to their daughters because... I wish a motherfucker would with my daughter. I'm going to tell you that right now. I don't give a shit. that You could be the goddamn president. I'm coming for your ass. Okay? And I, and I say that unapologetically. I'm dead serious. And, um, and I already know my daughter is going to be super duper talented. I wish, man, please. Man, please. But anyway. Okay. Before we go off the topic of sports, let me get into the sweet science. On Saturday afternoon in Great Britain, because that's where the fight took place at, it was broadcasted in the U.S. Saturday afternoon when it was live. Anthony Joshua fought Alexander Usyk for the heavyweight championship of the world in his hometown of London, England. And if you follow boxing, you know that Anthony Joshua was the WBA, the IBF, the WBO heavyweight champion of the world. Not the linear championship that belongs to Tyson Fury, but they had signed a deal to fight. They had signed a deal for two fights. Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury, which would have been the biggest fight in boxing and probably the biggest fight in the history of Great Britain. But alas, once again, I say boxing screws it up because Anthony Joshua fights Alexander Usyk, who was the undisputed cruiserweight champion with a record of 18 and 0. And he came in there and he worked Anthony Joshua and as a result, pulled off the upset and is the new heavyweight champion of the world. Are you effing kidding me? When I say boxing screws it up, every time boxing has a potential mega fight between the best, you need this if you're boxing. This is why UFC is thriving because their best fights their best. And with boxing, it always gets political politics promoters boxers that don't want to lose their record well look let me tell you something i don't know if anthony joshua and tyson fury is still gonna fight they probably will but it's lost its luster now now anthony joshua has two defeats on his records and why do i say two like that because there was a super fight mm, about three years ago that should have happened between undefeated heavyweight champions by the name of anthony joshua and deontay wilder and for some reason, whatever reason, that fight never materialized. That fight should have happened in 2018. The lead up was perfect. Both fighters had fight of the year victories in defense of their titles. Um, Anthony Joshua in 2017 beat long reigning champion Vladimir Klitschko. And then in 2018, Deontay Wilder had a life and death struggle where he knocked out uh, Luis King Kong Ortiz. That's when the fight should have been made. But once again, promoters, everything else gets in the way of making the fight that should just happen. Two undefeated champions in their prime. Didn't happen. And then guess what happens? Predictably, right on schedule, Anthony Joshua loses his title to a sack of potatoes named Andy Ruiz. And then, okay, he regains the title. But then guess what happens after that? Deontay Wilder loses his title to Tyson Fury. Better opponent. Tyson Fury, linear champion, still undefeated. I can actually respect that loss more. They're fighting again in a couple of weeks. That'll be their third fight. Can't wait to see it. But damn it, do you get what I'm saying? 
every time boxing has the home run event scheduled between two legitimately good boxers, it seems to fall apart, which is why these sideshow fights like a Jake Paul can thrive because boxing doesn't handle its business and it's making the same mistake with Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. I understand Errol Spence just got injured with the retina, but this is a fight that, again, this fight should have happened two years ago. Should have happened two years ago. So all I'm going to say is Anthony Joshua has the rematch clause. I'm sure he'll take it. Um, but I saw the fight. I don't see what would be different about a rematch. Usyk worked him. He's quicker. He's faster. And we'll see. But all I know is now, as much as I'm criticizing boxing right now, boxing in November is going to get me good, you motherfuckers. Y'all going to get me good because November 6th, you got Canelo versus Caleb Plant, unification fight. Then you got two weeks later, you got Terrence Crawford versus Sean Porter, and I can't wait for that one. But anyway, with that being said, with a buzzer, with a buzzer, with a buzzer. Ah, and for those of you that have chosen to ride with me through this whole entire long episode, for one, I love you so much. Thank you. And now it is time for a new segment that I'm putting into the podcast. It's called Brandon's Funny True Stories. Now, these stories are going to be based on mostly when I was a youth in high school and um, I think it's safe to say that pretty much every story is going to involve me and one Sean Vance. Yes, my brother. But just to give you guys kind of a preview, uh, I have titles for these stories. And they'll, you'll hear stories such as uh, Trash Can Trippin', uh, Hollerin' Turn Hysterical, The DDT, and Trouble with the Cheerleaders. I mean, so those are stories that you're going to hear. And for future reference, what I'm going to try to do is try to get is definitely try to get Sean on here to tell these stories with me. Um, but this story today is called Hurricane Turned Hilarity. OK, Hurricane Turned Hilarity. Why do I say this? OK, well, let me get started. Let's see. We were 16 years old, and I was actually moving. I was, I, was, I was in the midst of moving. I don't know if you guys who listen to this who are my age, you guys remember the hurricane of 99. It caused us to miss a couple of days of school. And, I, again, I was moving at the time. It was the beginning of our junior year of high school. And I was living at the time on Azalea Avenue. That's the north side. That's in Rico School District. Y'all have no idea that my four years in Holland Springs, half of them, I wasn't even living in the district. I was living in north side. But anyway, was moving from a house that's very near and dear to my heart, 622 Azalea Avenue. But we were moving to um, Jackson Square Apartments, which is right there in Holland Springs. So... Uh, you know, to get some help, I was, you know, I first week of school, I had a sleepover, plus we were, they were helping us move. I had Sean and my cousin Dwayne, my late cousin Dwayne Washington, rest in peace. Uh, as we talk about lost members of our class that we've had over the last month, uh, don't want to forget that my cousin, um, who was part of class of 2001, passed away in 2018. Um, in, a, in an accident, and it really messed me up because this was another one who's like my brother, Dwayne Washington. But anyway, not trying to turn it sad, but so it was me, Sean, and Dwayne. <coughs> Excuse me, me, Sean, and Dwayne. We're at, we're at my crib, we're all in my crib. It's late. Um, I don't even think who no, my mother wasn't there because my mother was working overnight. Um, I want to say I think my grandmother was there, but I think she was upstairs asleep. Either way, it's late. It's late. And we knew the storm was coming. And, you know, we're like, like I said, we're 16. Whatever, you know. So it's late. I want to say it's about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Dwayne is falling asleep. And me and Sean, we was up playing video games. And then, you know, neither one of we, you know, we night riders, man. We we get bored. And what happens when 16-year-olds get bored? You get in the shit. So, mind you, we're on Azalea Avenue. That's a high-volume street, if you don't know. And the storm has kicked in to full gear. 
full gear. And we're just sitting there like, well, damn. Because luckily, luckily, we we didn't lose power. Luckily, we lost power in Holland Springs. That's why we missed a couple of days of school. You feel me? But so, and, and I'm and I'm starting off the story segment light because those other titles that I gave you, they are definitely heavier. Um. <laughs> so, me and Sean are like, what are we gonna do? What what what, what the hell? What, what I mean, we're bored. You know, we're not tired. Look at the Wayne ass sitting over here, sleep head ass. And um, me and Sean are dumb enough, crazy enough to make the decision to go out there in the middle of a hurricane and go play Chinese knock knock. Chinese knock knock. On Azalea Avenue, on a high volume street where I've seen many accidents, we didn't care. We didn't care. So, we go uh, a couple doors down. I'm like, nah, I don't want to get my next door neighbors. No, 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 no. So, it's raining. It's, I mean, it is pouring down. Lightning, wind. We ducking and dodging branches and whatnot. Like, I'm, I remember I almost got smacked in the face by this thick-ass tree branch. So, every time we dodge something, we laughing. So, think about it. Thunderstorm sounds. Thunderstorm sounds. And we ducking and dodging and the cars that actually drive by who are driving by slow as hell. They see people running. They beeping the horn like, what the hell are y'all doing? So we knock on a few people's doors. We run. We hide. We see them come to the door. They look around. One person screamed out, man, fuck you. <laughs> and they didn't see us, but they just knew that somebody was playing. So we running back. Each time we knock on the door, we running back in the house. We running back in the house. We went across the street, across Azalea Avenue, knocked on another couple people's doors, running in the house. So eventually, we wake up Dwayne. Dwayne is like, man, what are y'all doing? Why y'all, what, like, y'all are wet. Y'all are wet as hell. What are y'all doing? We sitting there laughing. We, and me and Sean are like, yo, we, we, we playing. I mean, this has so many, not, so many names to this game. Chinese knock knock, ding dong ditch, nigga knock, whatever. However you want to, whichever. We were playing that game. So... We like, well, you up now, so what's up? You might as well come on in and join in on the fun. He's like, yeah, I'm down, whatever, I'm down. So we decide to hit a house that's on my street. And we're like, okay, all right, let's go. So as we running, I mean, as we, we're going there, we get there. Again, once again, ducking and dodging tree branches. Ducking and dodging tree branches. And... We knock on the door, right? We knock on the door. We run. Somebody comes to the door quicker than usual, right? So we ducking and dodging like a quarterback that's about to get sacked. But then there's a big puddle of water. And Dwayne falls back. I mean, he wasn't face first, but he slips up and falls. And this puddle was deep enough where your whole body was up in there. My man's fell totally in the puddle, and the guy opened up the doors like, man, fuck you, I'll come out there and I'll beat your ass. <laughs> man, hold up. <coughs> hold up. And we help him up. We're like, come on, man, come on, let's go. Now, we ain't want him to see what, we ain't want him to see what house we went into. So then we start ducking and dodging in people's backyard. We start ducking and dodging the people backyard, hopping fences and whatnot in the middle of a hurricane. In the middle of a hurricane. And then when we get back in, Dwayne is soaked. He is soaked like. <laughs> hey, look. I ain't trying to be funny. Me and Sean, we had went in different bathrooms and we at least took our underclothes off. We took the drawers off. We took the socks off. We wanted to make sure we weren't totally soaking wet. Hey, Tawain was full gear. <laughs> he was full. He had everything on. <laughs> and yes, of course, there's a change of clothes that you have when you come to spend a night at somebody's house. I mean, we ain't trifling. But, I mean, we... <laughs> We forgot to drop that one little detail of being prepared for playing Chinese knock-knock in the middle of a hurricane. 
So, I mean, so when we got back in the house, you know how when you super soaking wet, when you take a step, you see the water start coming out your shoes. They start coming out near your feet. And, you know, then you don't want nobody to walk on your carpet. When I tell you, dude look like he had just jumped in an eight-foot Olympic-sized swimming pool. It was hilarious. It really was. Had to be there to see it. But anyway, oh, my goodness. That is today's segment of Brandon's Funny True Stories. Like I said, I started off light. Those other titles that I named you are a whole, whole lot more heavier. I started off heavy with the Hermitage thing. Had to get y'all a tension. <laughs> but seriously, that's going to be a new segment in the show. Brandon's Funny True Stories. And again, this has been another episode of Sports Plus Life. If you have not yet become a subscriber, definitely hit that subscription button and put and become, excuse me, part of the Sports Plus Life family, as well as just subscribing to your boy, Brayvon Towns. That's what my YouTube name is. But uh, becoming part of uh, uh, my YouTube family. And you can also, you know, become a, a part of the Sports Plus Life uh, hilarity that goes on here, the sports topics, the life topics. But um, definitely uh, become a part of that spring of love as well. Because that's real. Because we say it's real, damn it. Okay? But anyway, again, it's your boy, Brandon Bravon Towns. Sports plus life, baby. I love you guys. HS all day. Peace.